I'm Dana Hahn Klein here with Zoe Lister Jones for Band Aid. I'd love to know what inspired you to make this film because for me it felt like seeing the ghost of Hanukkah future. <laughs> Because I was like, That's I'm at the stage where like my friends are all getting married and like everyone's pairing yeah. off, and I was like, I think this is what's coming next. Yes, it is. I can tell you that. I am the ghost of Hanukkah future. People have called me that before. Um, yeah, it, it's an intense time once you you're at a certain stage in life when everyone, you know, you start to see it when people start to pair off. But then once the kids. Um, come into play, it does really shift the social dynamic in a way that I don't think I ever anticipated. Um, and it's great, but it's like, if you're the one without the kids, it's a whole new kid and caboodle. At what point were you like, okay, I think I'm gonna make a movie about this? <laughs> you know, I didn't, I, I didn't think I was gonna make a movie like about that, but I think that is, that's so much a part of the, the world that the protagonists in the film live in, and it does sort of impact um, especially Anna's like sense of, of um, paralysis at this moment in her, in her life and sense of sort of uh, like loss of, of herself and, and, and f kind of feelings of failure. So, um, I mean, I myself know when I go and I'm the only person without a child at like a, a kid's birthday party, even if, if th those weren't feelings that I ever had thought of before, when you're there, you, it, it's hard not to kind of start to internalize those kinds of things. So in terms of the storytelling, I think it, it just, um, it was essential to, to their narrative. I love the way you tell the story in like the songs and, uh -huh. and using that as, as such a key part of it. And I'm curious as to, did you write the songs first or did you sort of have an outline for the plot and then did they kind of inform each other? I think I wrote one song first, um, which is a song called I Don't Wanna Fuck You. Um, it's a classic love song. And I think that was kind of my jumping off point. Um, and then the rest of the songs I wrote as the story unfolded in the screenwriting process. Um, they were all pretty organic to, to um, the storytelling. What's your kind of pet peeve? Is it dishes or is there like another? <laughs> dishes is a big one for me. It's major. And it, I, when I was talking to a lot of my friends who were in relationships and we had never really shared like our like marital squabbles or relationship squabbles, we all found out that we were fighting about dishes. <laughs> And I was like, what is happening? Why can't, it seems like an easy fix. Does no one have a dishwasher? <laughs> Why is this a challenge? Well, how do you personally blow off steam? Is it through creative outlets? Is it through, you know, physicality? Is it? Definitely not physicality. Um, I, yeah, it's through creativity. I mean, this is how I blow off steam, is like making movies. Um, but my husband and I, uh, used to do a lot of karaoke. Like, we would go to karaoke, not a lot, but like, if we were like, wanted to blow off steam, we'd go to a room and like sing it out. Um, and then he started learning piano and, uh, and I started learning bass and we started to sing other people's songs together. And I did find it really therapeutic. Um, and I'm sure that was partially the inspiration for this movie. You didn't know Fred Armisen before making this movie. No. But that role was just so perfect for what, whatever his persona seems to be. I know, it's crazy that I wrote it without him in mind because I don't know who else could have ever played that part. When you were casting, obviously, like being familiar with some sort of musical mm -hmm. talent is a part of it. So, how did Adam come into it? How did the, also the rest of your cast is amazing. I was like, <laughs> Red is in this, like Ravi Patel, I in know, this? like I what's know. going on here? Um, well, Adam, I also really barely knew. Um, I luckily the ensemble cast are mostly my friends. Um, so those were just like texts and and phone calls saying like, do you want to come play with me? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. Um, with Adam, I, I uh, called him and asked if he wanted to be in it. I, I didn't know if he played guitar or not. I just knew he was a really good and funny actor. And I felt like when we had met in passing, there was an ease between us that I thought would lend itself to chemistry on screen. And, um, and I kind of wasn't worried. I, I guess I just figured, like, he knows how to play. Like, most, you know, like... Jewish boys who went to summer camp have picked up a guitar in their life. Um, and, and it could be, like, I knew that it could be imperfect, you know, like that part of the narrative was that we were learning um, and that we were rusty. So it was, when he told me that he did play guitar, um, I don't think I realized 
quite how good he was and and how good his voice would be. Fred, on the other hand, is like a legitimate drummer, and I did know that. And that was so essential because we played all the music live in the movie, and you really do need a, a good drummer. And when I was talking to Fred, he was like, "Yeah, you need someone who can really play drums." So that was really lucky. And also, he's obviously a, a genius. Otherwise, I was gonna say, in terms of like drummer actors, at least Fred Armisen or Fred Armisen. <laughs> no. Yeah, don't, don't know who else there is. Um, I'd love to talk. You've talked extensively. You had an all-female crew, which I think mm -hmm. is so phenomenal and like inspiring. And I'm curious if there was an, ever an opportunity in your career that you felt like you had been brought in because like you were be being given a chance along those lines. Well, I think that the, the first TV show I ever did uh, was a show called Whitney on NBC, and it was created by Whitney. Cummings, and I felt that she gave me an opportunity that no one had ever given me before, and um, and I think that that did feel like there was sort of like a sisterhood involved to it. Um, and in terms of like, you know, like as a writer producer, I had never really experienced that, but I've been fortunate to get opportunities in those spaces. I think I had just seen. Um, women on crews and female directors um, being really underrepresented and, uh, and sometimes, you know, being treated uh, un unfairly. And so um, I think in some ways I was also just trying to set myself up for success because I knew as a first time female director um, that I could really be supported uh, in that kind of community and, and that then I could also create opportunities for women in departments where they otherwise aren't given them. So what was the most challenging thing for you personally, either film or write? Uh, I would say the biggest one is like a, a fight that we get into uh, that's kind of the climax of the film. Um, and we shot it, uh, we shot a seven minute take uncut. And that was, I, I loved the idea of sort of watching a fight in real time um, and also using the home as a, um, as almost like a, a third character in the scene. So we had to choreograph it really, really specifically. Um, and because it was such an emotionally like trying scene in terms of performance, it was pretty important to get the technical elements right. So that I would say that was the most challenging. Right, and you also have to be on all both sides of the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, I do have to say one of my favorite scenes is when um, Ben's mom explains the differences between men and women. <laughs> and I just thought, I was like, I want every one of my exes to see oh this. Oh my god. I just thought it was really well distilled and something that I'm sure people go through, like, I don't know, some people probably have like thousands in therapy to come to that conclusion. So does, is that something you found through the course of the film? Is that something you set out knowing that like, hey, you know what, this is the difference and I'm going to kind of embody no, this dynamic? No, I didn't know it. I think I wrote this script to try and figure it out. and. Uh, <laughs> And then I think I don't generally outline. Um, and so what's exciting, I think, as a writer when, when one doesn't outline is that these things just kind of like appear out of one's subconscious. So I think it was the work that I was doing in the screenwriting process that, that sort of got me there. What did you admire most about your character, since it's not actually you, <laughs> it's a character? Hmm. That's a really good question that nobody has asked me before. I guess I, I, I admire um, like her commitment even in the face of like total paralysis that like while there's a large sense of defeat in her world, like her drive would never let her give up on any of the things that she's a, like that she, she's facing sort of potentially giving up on, which is her, her relationship and, and her art and her sort of sense of her own womanhood. Where do you draw inspiration from? Uh, I guess like the, the, the quandaries that consume me, <laughs> you know, like something that I can't figure out is like, okay, well, I guess I better write about it or try and figure it out through, through art. What was your favorite song to perform live from the soundtrack? Mood was fun. I'm in no mood for your mood because we got to like really scream it out, and we were it was night. We were in a, in a garage, and everyone was dancing outside the garage. That was pretty fun. And then my last question is, uh, who was your favorite childhood fictional hero or heroine? <gasps> Ooh, childhood fictional hero or heroine. I used to read these books um, by a writer named Francesca Lea Block. There's one called Wheatsy Bat. <laughs> And that she was my favorite. I honestly, she she was just like a badass little revolutionary 
Riot Girl. <laughs> There we go. And I loved her. That's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Congrats thank you on the so film. Much. So nice to meet you. Yeah.